Okay, this is the outcome of a thought experiment I've been having the last couple of weeks. This is a file server for my computer network. I can store documents onto it uh, remotely. It's a wireless file server. Um, now it looks a bit funny. It actually looks like a bunch of plumbing pipe, uh, and that's exactly what it is. Uh, it is a waterproof uh, container, and it's designed to be buried. That's what the shovel's all about. Uh, I can bury it in my yard and uh, store files onto it. Now, that might sound like a pretty strange idea, uh, but I was thinking about the really valuable stuff uh, in my house, uh, and that's uh, documents and uh, photographs of vacations and movies. And in my digital world, that's several terabytes of data now, and uh, I'm very keen on keeping that safe. Uh, but I must admit, I'm not all that keen on paying a monthly fee to store all that data uh, year in and year out. Uh, but I want to protect it. And I was thinking, how can I uh, create a file server I can access, uh, but has a good chance of surviving natural calamities. Um, and where I live, that's uh, basically two possibilities. There's something called an interface fire. I basically live at the edge of a large forest, and uh, there's always a possibility of wildfire. And the other one is uh, earthquakes. I uh, could take my house down. Um, I live in a pretty active zone. And I was thinking, how can I protect that? And uh, I recall reading many years ago about uh, the Great Fire of London and how some people buried their valuables uh, in the ground uh, to protect them from the fire. And uh, with a little more research, actually, that's a pretty viable approach to protecting something. Even a few feet down um, can be a pretty benign environment, uh, regardless of what might be going on in the surface. So I set out to uh, think, how could I create a file server that I could bury uh, in my backyard of all crazy places uh, that would actually be uh, usable? So this is basically uh, how far I've gotten along with this idea. So the construction, pretty straightforward. I started off with a trip to the hardware store and I bought some ABS pipe, 4-inch. Uh, this is uh, used for waste drains in uh, homes and uh, pretty cheap and pretty easy to get. Um, I need to weigh it down, so the first thing I did is I cast a uh, bit of concrete uh, the same size as the cylinder. And uh, that would allow me to, to weigh it down. I don't want things bobbing up from the groundwater. Um, and then basically, a uh, pretty simple construction. There's an end cap glued on the one side, uh, then of course on the other side. Uh, I have a screw fitting. Uh, this is an inspection plug, I think. The uh, nice thing about it, though, is it's also meant to be watertight. There's actually a rubber gasket on it, so it's almost perfect for building uh, an inexpensive uh, storage unit, basically, uh, for some electronics. Uh, this is a photograph looking downwards. Uh, you can see some packets in there. That's uh, desiccant. Uh, I, obviously, electronics and water don't go well together, so it is supposed to be watertight, but I thought a bit of desiccant wouldn't uh, be a bad idea. In terms of mounting electronics, again, I needed to build a frame. Uh, this is uh, my table saw. I have a, a special aluminum cutting blade in, and I just took some aluminum sheet stock and I've uh, cut off a slice here, as you can see. Um, then my next step was to basically lay out the uh, series of holes I need to drill into it to mount the electronics. Um, real old school technique here, um, basically uh, spraying on some toolmaker's dye, and that allows me to do something called marking up. Uh, it's really surprising how accurate you can be with uh, metalworking with some very uh, simple hand tools. Um, but basically what I'm showing here is I'm describing the lines and then I can actually drop uh, the, the cross points and then um, drill them out very accurately. It uh, always amazes me how accurate you can be if you take a bit of care. Um, let's talk about electronics. Uh, I basically want it to be battery powered because um, I don't want to sort of uh, break the uh, envelope of the uh, cylinder. I want it to be watertight as much as possible. Uh, and survivable. Uh, so I started out with a uh, USB uh, power bank. This is a 20 watt hour power bank, I believe. It's a, a lithium uh, meant for uh, recharging tablets on the road and such not. Uh, that was uh, sort of the base of the power system. Uh, I then needed to graft on the ability to remote control it. I basically need to turn it on and off. Um, the, uh, the power bank I'm choosing and the, the server uh, CPU I'm choosing it will run for about two days, which is a with 24, 48 hours of runtime is pretty good, but obviously can't just leave it on all the time. So uh, a trip to uh, Amazon or eBay uh, pulled up this little uh, remote control module. I think it's meant for like garage door openers. 12-volt-based uh, 12 base, 12 volt based design, but uh, that was pretty easy to uh, to rework. I had basically cut out the um, drop regulator onto the uh, module, and I bypassed the 12-volt uh, relay uh, with a, a high-side uh, PMOS FET switch. Um, uh, the other little quirk here is there's a little boost regulator that boosts the uh, 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 lithium-ion battery up to 5 volts. Uh, the power pack is very, very smart. It actually turns itself off if it doesn't sense a load. Uh, unfortunately, the only way to turn it back on is to press a button, and that uh, wouldn't work so good when it's buried uh, in my garden. 
Um, so this is now basically a remote controlled uh, power pack. I can basically press the button and turn it on and off. Uh, in terms of compute power, I was looking for probably the lowest power a file server I could come up with. Um, and uh, that was the Raspberry Pi in this case. Um, it's basically a Linux box, obviously, and uh, Linux is an infinitely usable file server. Um, lots and lots of ways to configure that uh, with uh, just absolute ease. I uh, put a little wireless dongle on one side so it connects out to my network. And um, I'm going to mount on the back plate here eventually, probably a two and a half inch SATA uh, hard drive. Well, probably a solid state drive to actually store the terabytes of files. But uh, for now, I've got the, the assembly looking like this. So basically, I can turn it on and off remotely. Uh, with this little uh, handheld uh, remote control and uh, it wakes up connects to my network of course so i can do the file transfer and then i can of course shut it down and then press remote control again to uh, save power um, and it works i mean not a huge surprise it's all pretty much off the shelf technology so it's an interesting idea uh, the only thing now i'm trying to figure out is uh, how to charge the battery remotely i bought some of these qui charger uh, mats and uh, receivers and they seem to work really well actually but um no challenge here is I can't understand the lithium battery uh, chemistry. I'm not entirely sure if lithium batteries outgas or not, so whether I would need to have a, some sort of pressure release valve on this, because obviously if the batteries have a mishap and um, do produce a gas, I can't have it uh, pressurized in the cylinder. So don't know if anyone out there knows what the chemistry looks like for lithium ion batteries, and if they give off gas or not, we'd like to hear from you. Anyways, um, that was sort of my interesting thought experiment the last couple of weeks of trying to figure out how to store files safely. And uh, this is actually, yeah, it's plausible. So I think I'll insert this assembly into my cylinder here and tighten the top onto it. And I'm going to put it in my garden and uh, see how it performs, at least environmentally. I still got to work on some sort of uh, plausible battery charging scheme there and uh, put a bigger file system onto it eventually. But... Uh, for now, uh, that's where uh, my mind has taken me on this idea.